Hey guys, it's Dan here. In this week's episode, let's talk about leverage buyouts, aka LBOs. So in this video, you will learn three things. First of all, of course, I will start by defining the term leverage buyout, aka LBO. Then we will, of course, look at an example of a leverage buyout. And at the end of the video, let's talk about is it worth it to do an LBO. All that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on. Now, let's, as always, let's start with the definition of a leverage buyout. So what is a leverage buyout? A kind of a complicated technical term, so let's try to understand it, what it means in simpler terms. Leverage buyout. So leverage in finance is already, always related to debt. It means, and I will explain it later, that it's going to be um, buying a company using a lot of debt and you will understand why leverage is so important in finance, uh, especially when you're doing a leverage buyout. And the second part of the definition is buyout, which is another word for acquisitions, meaning you are buying another company. So now let's talk about the definition here. So the goal of a leverage buyout, so using debt at an acquisition, uh, the goal of all this is actually summed up into these four easy to understand steps. And I will go, of course, step by step, and then we will um, dig deeper into each step. So the first step of a leverage buyout, um, and of course, uh, what you have to understand when you when you do a leverage buyout is it can only be done by uh, by professional guys. Okay, usually these are called private equity firms, so firms that are specialized uh, into um, investing into private market, right, in, in private companies. So not company, they they will not purchase a company like Apple, which is publicly traded, but they will look at the private markets so or the companies which are not yet on the stock exchange. Uh, this is very important because the goal of these experts uh, who will do the leverage buyout, the first step is to find an undervalued private company. So here you have two very important uh, words, undervalued and private. Let's start with private first. Private means the company they want to buy is not yet publicly traded. So basically it's a younger company and a company that is not yet publicly traded means that the valuation uh, of this company, so, so the purchase price of this company will not be too high. Of course, you cannot do a leverage buyout with Apple, for example, because it, co it costs a fortune to buy Apple, of course. So uh, first step here, you need to find a private company. And second of all, you want to find an undervalued private company. Why undervalued? Because you will understand that in a leverage buyout, the entire mechanism is a bit like flipping uh, an apartment or flipping a house. Um, you want to buy a, a cheap, or very affordable house, for example. You will fix it and then you will resell it to make a profit. So in the first step, of course, when to find an undervalued private company is very important because if it's not undervalued, uh, so if you are paying too much for the company, it, it's the same as if you're paying too much uh, for an apartment, it will be very difficult to make a profit afterwards if you already bought it uh, at a very, very high price. Once you have found an undervalued private company, you will buy it using a lot of debt. That's very important uh, in a leverage buyout because when I, meant, when I said earlier, leverage means debt. So uh, when, you, when you buy it with a lot of debt, it means you are using a lot of leverage in finance. Why is this so important? Let me explain you something. Imagine you go to the casino um, and you, you only bring your own money. Okay, you are one guy, you go to, the, to Las Vegas with your own money. How much can you make? Well, if you are very good in casino play and stuff like that, well, you can, you can make some money, but only with your own money. So it's not going to be multiplied by a lot, of course. And the lo if you lose it, it's only going to be your money that you're going to be lost. The thing is now, imagine you are using leverage, meaning you are using debt to go to the casino. It means that you will ask all your friends and your family, for example, please lend me some money and I, I pay you back with interest, for example. And so all the, the 50 people you know will lend you money and you will go to the casino and, this, and you will play with more leverage. As you can imagine, it means two things if you play with leverage. First of all, um, 
you can make much more if you win, of course, because you, you are starting with what, much more cash, of course. And on the other side, of course, <laughs> well, if you lose, you're not losing your own money, but you are use, losing your own money plus the money uh, of all your friends and family, and they're going to be delighted, of course. So um, this is the leverage game, basically the debt game. So if you're buying with a lot of debt, it means basically you are, of course, taking a risk. But the entire leverage buyout process is kind of a risky thing and uh, you will see in the example why. So now that we have found our undervalued private company and we have bought it using a lot of debt, the goal here, step number three, is to grow this company. Because um, imagine why is, can a company be undervalued? Well, for example, um, because the management team is not good enough because the processes are not smooth enough and these kind of things. So we'll twist, you will twist and turn a lot of things. Maybe you will change the entire management structure and these kind of things uh, and, and, and really push for more revenue and more, more profit, of course. The goal here is to grow this company to, to a larger company. And this is, of course, also, um, it implies acquisitions in this case, because you can grow a company uh, by improving processes and, and getting better at sales and stuff like that. But usually you grow a company by buying competitors, for example. I have worked for a company uh, in, in, in testing, so biotechnology and this kind of stuff. Uh, and th th there were two big companies in Europe, one for Western Europe, the other one for Eastern Europe. And one fund ex actually bought both of them um, in a leverage buyout they twisted and turned the entire thing, they merged the entire structure and really turbocharged everything. Why? Because the goal, of course, once you have done the first three steps, is to sell the entire new structure after three to five years. So you're basically flipping the new structure to make a profit at the end. Now that we have understood the goal of a leverage buyout, sort of four different steps, Let's look at an example and I hope you will have a better picture of it and I try not to give you too many numbers and try to keep it very basic and simple because it's kind of a complicated long-term process so um, let me dig into it. So first of all as I just mentioned earlier um, it's always some kind of private equity fund so experts of investors who are chasing good opportunities in the private market so companies that are not yet public. Well the private equity fund will look for a target company that they can buy at an undervalued price, okay? So imagine in this case, my private equity fund has found a target company and it's gonna be uh, this undervalued private company called A, okay? So, and, and they have agreed with this company that they're gonna buy them, so the acquisition price of this company will be 100 and imagine it's a very good price because it's undervalued imagine that the sector is not is not in a great shape so far um kind of undervalued by investors not good management structure not very uh, process oriented and not a good sales team for example that's why it's it's undervalued so far so there's a lot of potential okay if you do it right so now what you have to understand is as i just mentioned earlier now comes leverage into play which means that so in this case, you will not buy this company using only cash, but you will use a part of, of equity, so a bit, a bit of cash and a lot of debt. So how, how does it play? Well, the private equity fund will provide the cash and, and they will be the owners of the new company. And imagine for the acquisition price of 100, they will provide 40. Okay, so they are the, the owners and they provide 40. The, the other 60, will come from their partners which are lenders in this case it's gonna be banks for example and it's gonna be uh, the debt market uh, to keep it simple um, you, there are sp specific bonds so you can you can borrow money at the stock exchange uh, you can b borrow money at the bond market which is the debt market um, to, to do such a deal I, I would like to keep it very simple so to make it simple you imagine you have lenders and these lenders will agree to lend 60 uh, to the entire deal to make sure that the acquisition of 100 can be completed, 40 plus 20, okay? And in this case, for example, the banks, which take less risk because uh, they are allowed to, to, to take the business if the entire thing goes wrong, 
when the banks, let's say, they will charge 6% of interest and the debt market, so the bonds, the bondholders, which do not have um, this, this advantage of taking part of the company when everything goes wrong, well, they will, of course, ask for more return because it's riskier for them to lend the money. So the debt market, for example, they will lend uh, to this deal for 9%, let's imagine, okay? So we have our 60 plus 40, now the deal can be completed, okay? So great, you have bought your undervalued private company. Now the real work starts. Um, so the, the private equity fund will look for other opportunities to grow this company, to optimize the management structure, to optimize sales, to optimize all the processes inside, to keep everything lean, a cost control and all these things. And of course, they will also look at other competitors that they could buy also at an undervalued price to grow the entire thing here, okay? Um, so in this case, imagine this is my company A that we just bought, and this company A will now buy company B, and they will merge together to become a, a bigger structure, okay? And everything will be optimized. And in this case, A buys B, for an acquisition price of let's say 30, okay? And the 30 again will not be financed uh, through capital, but they will be financed through debt. That's why again we have our leverage here. Um, and here the 30 acquisition price will again will be financed by the debt and, 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 and the banks. So uh, 30 of debt are added to the entire mix to buy this company B. Okay, so, so far we have bought company A for 100 and we have bought company B for 30. And uh, so far we only have spent 40 in, in real capital. So we are owning 40 and the rest is owned to the banks, right? And to the capital markets. Um, and, and as you can see, the, the, the leverage buyout is kind of a tricky and risky topic because actually it's, it's very risky due to, uh, well, a lot of debt involved. So now um, you can imagine that A and B, while well, they are growing, there is a lot of money in, in, in the game, but of course they have to pay back interest to, to, to the lenders, of course, because the lenders have, well, they have lent you money and they are expecting to get their 6 and 9% back every year, right? So how can this entire thing go right so far? Well, imagine A and B again are my under, undervalued companies. Now the goal of my private equity fund and all the investors behind is of course to push the entire thing. So now is the high growth phase and everything gets optimized, okay? So the two companies will merge, there will be a lot of synergies hopefully. Um, for example, you, you don't need two accounting teams, it's going to be one accounting team and so on and so on. Same for purchases. Um, the, the department that, that buys stuff for the company and these kind of things. So there, there are a lot of synergies to be made um, and a lot of things to be optimized. And this phase is really cr critical here because of course the goal, now that you have so much debt, the goal is not only to grow, meaning more profit, more revenue and so on, but of course you have to pay back all this interest, right? And all this debt. So that this is a crucial phase because if you are not able to pay back all this interest, well, uh, the entire structure will fail, of course. But imagine in this case, uh, we have done a, a great job of buying two companies that were, were really underperforming and we were able to um, manage everything correctly. Now these two companies are very valuable. They are very strong, uh, very good revenue growth, very good cash flow, very good profits and stuff like that. So now they are able to pay back the interests. And after three to five years, now it gets interesting for the private equity company because they their end game after three to five years is to sell uh, this entire structure and make a profit. So now how, how does, does it evolve the entire thing? Well, um, imagine we have found a new long-term investor. Imagine we are in healthcare, for example. We have a new new investor coming coming in. We can sell everything we have here uh, for a very good price and we are selling uh, our structure uh, that we have built for the last five years, we are selling it for 200, okay? So now what's, what's the, the end game? Well, um, let's look at the profits. So far, uh, imagine our new owner gives us 200, so we are selling everything we have, right? 
we are, we, we are only we are selling for 200 uh, but how much did we invest so far well we have paid 100 in acquisition price and we have paid 30 for the second acquisition so 130 and imagine we have paid 20 for interest so far because of course uh, the entire thing is financed by debt and the, the, the company was able to pay back all this debt to bank and, and the debt market and imagine the sum of all this stuff was about 20 to keep it simple so 200 my sell price minus 100 minus 30 minus 20 leaves me with a 50 profit for my private equity fund now the big question is it worth it to do an lbo and what has to go right uh, to be successful making uh, a leverage buyout so now let's look at the smileys <laughs> what has to go wrong uh, what has to go right sorry well first of all of course you need a private equity team that is very experienced and is able to find this great raw diamond and in this case first smiley here because we need to find an undervalued company with a lot of potential if you don't do this it's going to be very difficult to make a profit at the end because of course if you buy it at a, at a too high price or of course if you buy a company that is useless basically well it's going to be very complicated second of all the lenders play a big big role of course because here that's why you have the second smiley uh, if the interest rates are not six and nine percent but 12 and 20 percent for example it's going to be much more complicated to be successful of course because the debt amount and the interest paid on it will be much higher and it's going to be much more difficult to do such a profitable scheme here because of course if the, the lenders are well uh, charge you too much it's going to be pretty complicated to do then the next smiley of course here high growth phase and optimize that that's absolutely key if you start uh, investing in several companies and growing them and all these things you have to make sure that the synergies you have planned well they if they re do they really work out if if i put my two uh, accounting teams and my two uh, let's say purchase teams together uh, do they really save me as much money as i thought that's very critical because of course if you're not able to grow enough and optimize enough well your cost structure will be way too high and you will probably not be able to pay back your interest which is the entire goal of the leverage buyout because if you're not able to pay back your interests you're gonna be a massive troubles uh, with these guys here right with the lenders and of course the last money very important um, well you need to find a, a seller at the end it's a bit like when you flip a house uh, first of all you need to find a seller and second of all he or she needs to be able to pay pay a big top dollars you know what i mean because of course if you sell it if you sell it for 150 or 130 you're not making any profit so i think now you know if it's worth it or not for sure it's it's very uh, complex to do it you need a lot of experience it's a it's a very uh, complicated long term process a lot of things can go wrong so uh, maybe you work for a company that has been into a leverage buyout maybe ask around uh, these kind of things uh, i hope this was very informative of course don't forget to like if it was informative it takes me six seven hours to produce such a video of course subscribe i post uh, new corporate finance market finance content every sunday on this channel so of course don't forget to subscribe and well i hope you will enjoy uh, your great week and stay smart stay safe Bye-bye, guys.